bonus bonus experience experience. It's like BXP, but smaller and less organized. I'm Ray. I'm Monica. You know us because you probably already listened to Bonus Experience. I don't I'm, know why you would listen to this without listening to Bonus Experience too. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of an edge case. I mean, I guess someone could pick up the show while we're doing these um, preview bonus episodes and be like, well, I guess I'll just start with the most recent release, which True. would be this one. True. This is a Patreon preview. Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> That's my air horn noise. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> this is the sort of shit you could get if you're a patron of our Patreon. If you're patronizing us. Yeah, please patronize <laughs> us. But don't patronize us. This bonus episode is a homebrew jam. Put some sick beats under that phrase, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Killing it, Margaret. Killing it. What's a homebrew oh, so- jam? Yeah, we're going to have an open discussion about a subject that we're going to design on the fly. And it is almost always going to use an existing system. Thus, homebrew. Also, homebrew. I yeah. thought homebrew jam sounded more fun than like design jam or hack jam. Hack jam. Yeah, that way, like if you're going to hack the system, hack the mainframe. I guess so. Like I'm thinking of it as a literal jam is probably my problem. And I think that's because I made bread today. And um, everything smells like bread. Lots of things are bread with you. <laughs> I uh, am bready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Let's try to come up with something cool, maybe even something playable. Yeah, let's and maybe if, maybe we can inspire someone else to finish our shitty work. <laughs> sure. All right, cool. Okay. What are we doing right, today? What are, what are we doing? Are, are we paying Margaret to do this? Anyway, um, tonight's recipe is oh. Pokemon by the Apocalypse. That's right. That's right. Playing Pokemon using Powered by the Apocalypse. Did you not think it would be a Powered by the Apocalypse episode? I don't, I don't, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you if you didn't think that this is going to be a PBTA discussion for our first jam. All right. So what are we talking about? We want to emulate the game of Pokemon through the Powered by the Apocalypse system. Right. So this was actually a conversation we had via many texts many moons ago. Uh, in November, actually, I remember when that happened because I was at an anime con and I encountered someone who was all like, oh, you do the game design. I'm playing Pokemon in D&D. And I'm like, the f- <sighs> Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Right. A D20 Pokemon, while that would be very crunchy and would probably give the hardcore Pokemon battlers like the sort of satisfaction they're looking for. I really like Pokemon for the fact that you can like form a bond with your favorite cute animal and or kick ass animal and, you know, make it do cool shit in fights. Right. And so oh, right. I think that's what this game would be for as opposed to the people that are like raising their EVs and shit. Right. Um, sure. I definitely agree <laughs> with that. Uh, and so I, I actually asked this person, why did you choose that system? And they were basically like, because that's what I know. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> fair answer. And so I was like, well, allow me. I can show you the world. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with powered by the apocalypse. Uh, yeah, so I pointed out that if you're writing a D&D class, you basically have to do like 30 levels worth of design. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's uh like um Pathfinder, I think has the character that gets the the class that gets the eidolons. And there's other summoners. There's there's summoning stuff in there. And the, you could certainly use that. But then you then also have to write up an individual stat block for every single Pokemon. Yup. So, it is a huge amount of work. What so, an undertaking. Right. And not that hacking a PBTA game from the ground up is not going to be a lot of work. But it's a little bit less work. Yes. So yeah. the first thing I pointed out that I think our, PB, our, our Pokemon by the Apocalypse game should definitely have is to take a lot of the archetypes that you see in characters both from the games and the TV show which I haven't watched since I was a child um, and turn them into playbooks. Okay. Are you, are you talking about like like the trainer class? Like like Hex Maniac or like Pokemon Veteran? Yeah. Like that so you level? Could, okay. Yeah, you could. I think that you could take like Pokemon Breeder and have that be a playbook. Okay, yeah. Um, And, like, depending on how balanced you want it to be, you could even have Gym Leader be a playbook. Okay. 
Because I that, that would, would be, be interesting. I would play the hell out of a gym leader. Yeah, it would tie you down to one location though. But I guess if you're playing like in the in the original flavor apocalypse now. <laughs> It's not apocalypse now. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I love the, the smell of partial successes in the morning. In the original flavor apocalypse world, you've got hard holder, which would tie you down to one location. So I don't see why you couldn't have gym leader. Yeah, gym but leader. The, but the flavor of Pokemon is very much like going from town to town. So that yeah. might change the change you, the themes a bit. Or I mean, you could you know, have uh, the playbook for an allowance for a gym leader to, like, be away from their gym for the story. Oh, like Misty and Brock style? <laughs> yes. <the> show? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Ask ask, I guess we're not gym leaders anymore. <laughs> well, like, you wouldn't have to give up your, like, you could even hard code into the playbook that you have to return to your gym every so often. Yeah, okay. But yeah, you all could right. be traveling with the group to fulfill whatever like depending okay, on cool. the plot structure of your game so we could have you could have breeder you could have gym leader um you could actually take the whole like satoshi slash ash main character of every pokemon game like the plucky kid like the hero kid as like the future uh, future champion yeah like a future champion type playbook which could okay, almost look okay. like um what is it the chosen one from monster of the week yeah yeah I the like one that's that. the buffy yeah, and right. so you could you could you could have something like that. So they aren't necessarily the most powerful character, but maybe the one with the most opportunity for growth, or uh, the one that has uh, the biggest benefit to having relationships with any kind of Pokemon as opposed to a specific kind of Pokemon. Right, and and if you wanted to like really tie that into like some of the cute shit that Ash's character had to like bring to light about the world through through his own character arc. It could involve shit like your Pokemon will gain powers or or levels or whatever we end up with faster, but now they have more of a chance to like disobey you. Like that's something that only the future champion has to deal with because his Pokemon are growing too fast or whatever. He's a whatever. he's naive and it's all about his right. relationship with his with his guys. Right. With his so cool that, that's, guys. Yeah. So that's like your main character kid. Uh and yeah. then and then you could have a category for all the weird people who you encounter. Yeah, exactly. You got to have a shorts boy. <laughs> yeah. Shorts boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Probably don't have to have a have shorts, a shorts boy, boy. There should be a shorts boy option somewhere I mean, in one shorts, of the playbooks. Shorts boy is probably an NPC, but like the people who you meet in the gyms, like, or the dedicated trainers you meet, like, on the road or whatever. Like, your hikers, your bug collectors. What, what I like is the is the potential to have these playbooks also designate your Pokemon types. Because when you run into these trainer classes, you can, you can like, okay, this is a Hexmaniac. Gonna be a lot of ghost types. Right. This, so is then, a, this is a lad. There's gonna be a lot of bug types or the right. normal types. So you could have, like, Pokemon Enthusiast being a separate playbook from future champion um and then the pokemon enthusiast then you pick what kind of enthusiast you are so are you a hex nut what hex hex, hex maniac maniac uh, <laughs> uh a lad a swimmer a hiker uh but whatever. i, but I like i like I like forcing the trainer classes into the playbooks themselves as opposed to just there's pokemon champion but then there's pokemon enthusiast because then it it, it cuts down on it, it's almost like it, it's i mean it's basically almost uh assigning like classes to these different types of people that you could be it's like okay you're a hiker which means mm -hmm. you can choose from rock ground and fighting types yeah so, so it's not like you have the whole breadth of the 750 or oh, however many there are now it's right. okay well you're a beauty so your pokemon has to be pretty right. <laughs> it's like you can have any pokemon you want it's just got to be pretty <laughs> right so like the way i would do that is i would put all of those because you don't want like 28 different uh playbooks that basically do the same thing so you put no all of them I, i'd say the, pick like the seven most popular ones like right, right, maniac you, <laughs> right and you put all of those under the umbrella of enthusiast and then you pick which kind of enthusiast you are i guess and then that know. then you you pick your pokemon which must have these keywords ghost pretty bug but then we've we've taken it from okay we have a good pool of of potential playbooks to okay so far we have two we have four we have the Pokemon champion. We have champion, the future, gym, the future gym, champion, future champion, gym leader, uh, gym leader breeder, enthusiast. and enthusiast. 
And then you have you have your team, Rocket, Skull, whatever the other ones were called. What does the breeder do? Oh, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> See, that's why I'm saying keep with it because the trainer class like like dictates what kind of it it almost suggests like what kind of personality, what kind of abilities, what kind of Pokemon they would have, much like like the character archetypes in Monster of the Week. Or... So I guess. I guess what the struggle with the breeder archetype is, is that I don't necessarily know that there are enough characters under that umbrella. Right. Because I'm also not into the deep Pokemon lore. <laughs> no. So I'm so like, what characters, because the, the, the playbook design should really uh, convey character archetype. Like, mm -hmm. what types of characters exist in this narrative? I'm specifically choosing from the pool of NPCs that exist in the game worlds. Okay. Like the, like, you know, <laughs> oh shit. There's like a whole <laughs> fucking list of it on Bulbapedia and I don't okay. want to go look at it, but there's, all, but there's a couple that show up in like, in like every game. Like there's the, the fishermen who okay. they're just, they just have a lot of water type Pokemon. Like it's it like they they're they're basically like Pokemon like character class. Okay, so which is why I defaulted to that for for the right. playbooks because okay. it's a pretty good it's a pretty good one for one. So if you, uh, if you would in instead prefer to have those trainers be broken down by like trainer Pokemon type, how would you distinguish them mechanically? That's because the I, thing. Yeah, right. now we need to get into how do we handle the Pokemon themselves. Right. So I guess we can put a pin in that for a second because my point is that there's not enough difference between the fisherman and the lad to make them two different things. I'm saying that there's a big difference because the lad's going to have access to look my my what i'm rolling with is okay. the lad's gonna have bug type and normal type right. and then we create moves based on these are the sort of pokemon that this guy would have oh okay. and then the so, fisherman is gonna have a whole bunch of magic carp <laughs> and we're gonna have right. moves based on okay you have six magic carp okay. here's what you do <laughs> all right so i think we're actually talking past each other because oh, the, no. way, the way i see this is that the depending on how we stat up fishermen and well, depending on how we set up Pokemon, let let's here. I'm going to go to right, the list just, of Pokemon right. trainer classes, and right. we're going to just pick a couple. So my point is that the way those two characters interact with their Pokemon in the context of the narrative of the game is not different enough to make them have different moves. You don't think so, huh? No, I think that if you're defining these character classes with moves based around how they relate to their Pokemon. Uh, but the kind of the the generic NPC, like the hiker, the fisherman, the lad, the pex maniac, are people who are obsessed with one specific kind of Pokemon. They relate to their Pokemon all kind of in the same way mechanically, in that the Pokemon helps them do a thing that they are into, like sometimes their job, sometimes their hobby, uh, and that uh you know they are the person who you they're not like driven to success like the future champion is uh and they're not like fixtures of society like the gym leader is they're just person who has pokemon and it is usually all of one type or one and another type so where where i'm coming from where what i'm envisioning with these with these playbooks and how the character itself is like played is okay. it's not so much about the person who has the pokemon as it uh -huh. is the pokemon and the two the two the two are basically inextricable in the system it's not okay. so much like oh i ran into a hiker as it is i ran into a geodude and then an onyx and then a machop or okay. ma machop it's macho right. with a p machop so okay. i i basically uh, think of like fusing those two concepts of due to ask Pokemon and the Pokemon themselves. So it's not okay. moves that are, I'm a guy and I, here's what, you know, I do with my Pokemon so much as your playbook is the, no, is the Pokemon that you have. Is the Pokemon. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think we're looking, we're both looking at Pokemon as moves. Sort of. Sort I of. I think so. Okay. So yes. how, would, how would you do it then? Um, let me, I'm looking at Hiker right now. Okay. Fighting ground rock type. 
So I would have the hiker would have moves that relate to something that a fighting Pokemon could do that isn't necessarily like in a battle or something that a a, probably a little more easy because fighting is such a weird fucking type a ground a ground Pokemon something that a ground Pokemon could do like think think of it um like uh uh like HMs like you can use us from the map like you've got a ground Pokemon it knows dig so maybe one of your moves is just straight up dig because you're a hiker you have access to this move that lets you you know what would dig do it lets you you know travel faster you can get out of a scene faster or you know we come up with the actual like mechanic for it but mm-hmm. that that's how i envision it it's not so much the hiker using that move so much as the hiker going doug trio use dig and that's what he has access to because he's the hiker he's got fighting or ground or rock type right okay um so I kind of picture Pokemon as being like, like I said, like like moves basically. So like, you have a Doug Trio, um, and so then you get to assign certain qualities to it, and then the Doug Trio knows Dig, it knows Earthquake, it knows Tackle, which is not a ground type so move. It was just the first you're thinking of the Pokemon, Pokemon think as like a it. a separate creature that you stat out. Kind of like kind a, of like other pet class playbooks. Yes. Yeah, so so, oh, so kind okay. of like you have. So let's let's under my concept, you have like the Pokemon enthusiast. You have a hiker. Hiker chooses you know, like you pick your type. I've decided to be a hiker Pokemon enthusiast, which means that locks me into ground type and fighting type, right? Okay. So then I choose. I, I pick from like a, a list of things where you could just for simplicity's sake, I would probably say that you can name any Pokemon and then pick traits from a list and then access to a handful of, of, of preset moves or preset abilities. And that like, so you can build any Pokemon you want using tags or specific moves. Right. I also love to overcomplicate things. So that may be a bit much. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I, I think just, just allow, allowing them to say you have whatever Pokemon you want. With right. So then, like, the two I can, tags, I can and say, then the tags are just the types. Like, oh, I have right. a Emolga, so it's tagged Electric Flying. Right. And that's all. So I, I, right. I don't even know what that is because I'm having. It's one of the Pikachu XPs. <laughs> okay. Um. So like, I'm just gonna stick to the ones that I know, which are all gonna be original 151. I'm old. I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, so like. So you, and then like maybe part of the preset of being the Pokemon enthusiast is that your team is always three Pokemon and there are any three rock fighting or ground type that you want. So I like Onyx. He's a giant rock snake. Cool. I have a, I have an Onyx. I like Geodude. He's cute. I have Geodude. I have Doug Trio. He's also like three little penises. He's cute. He's like three, I don't know, three guys. Three hey guys, three little hot dogs, uh, three little dicks. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> those are my three. And then because I've ch- I've chosen my type, I've picked my three Pokemon. Uh, then I get to basically assign moves that my team knows. And then as long as I'm fighting, I have access to those moves. Okay. Like Earthquake, like Dig, like uh, Rock Slide. Well, I like the idea of... I'm always going to be on the side of you guys can have Pokemon and it's going to be like any Pokemon you want. It's going to be super simple to replicate them in the system because I don't want to have to stat them all out individually. I'm I'm worried right. that going with that model means we're going to have a hard time coming up with at least, you know, five or six playbooks. Okay. So we, we already have four, assuming we can, we can figure out what the breeder does and why, but why would a team member like a rocket team rocket or team flare or whatever be with the party because they're all well, they're for, always rivals they're all they're always or not rivals they're always like enemies they're always kind of bad guys yeah um though i mean if you look at jesse and james from the tv show they weren't always in the main character's way yeah and they but weren't they, always doing and they weren't always doing bad things they're such good npcs though yeah and if we though, and if we were to homebrew this out into like a full thing we would have to you know come up with like you know fronts or whatever the front but, would like s- synthesis would be and we one of those would have and, to be a team and depending on well like okay so if you want to be a member of team rocket then another team is the bad guys yeah okay 
All right, competing. Uh, and also, people fucking love Team Skull. Yeah, Team Skull's great. <laughs> and also, they're really kind of just doofy. They're not even evil. They're not even really doing anything. Yeah, <laughs> they're just and like doing their like own. they just they they dress a particular way. And like they're in your way and are annoying. But Team Skull and is kind of in, like it's kind, they're kind of the exception. Like in other games, the sure. teams get really nefarious. I mean, like Team Rocket's goal in theory was to steal Pokemon, but the two characters, the, the Jesse and James, never really did any of that. Mm, no. And we're often more decent people than some other people in the setting. And can you can you think of people who like at least are our age who would pick this up and be like, can I play Team Rocket? So I think what what's what's happening here is is you're designing from the TV side, and I'm designing from the DS game side. Well, like I've seen the TV show, which again is filtered through what I remember as an adult because I literally have not watched it since I was in middle school, uh, and. The first game, which see my points about being from my childhood, and like I think I played Ruby and Sapphire in college. Oh. And then Henry played the most recent one. The one where you're in not Hawaii. Yeah, Sun and, Sun and Moon. With Team Skull. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Which Sun and Moon was really kind of sweet. And I played Pokemon Go for a while while it was super popular. Yeah. Yeah. Um and like uh I played with uh, Henry's Pokemon Ami in a bunch of different games because I really like Esper and I just want to pet it. Just want to pet Esper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have I have several Esper plushies. I have a big one and a little one, and they're currently sitting on my shelf. Do they all have that thousand yard friends. stare? Uh huh. Oh, they good. do. Excellent. It's a feature. <laughs> yeah. So like, I don't really know like the deep lore of pokemon so i'm trying to approach it from like what would i want to replicate in a story Mm -hmm. based on the closest thing i can think of to a narrative which is of course the tv show (laughs) right well i mean that's i mean the narrative in pokemon tends to be like the the two plots of you're trying to become champion and also this team is up to no good or right. this enemy is up to no good and it involves a legendary Pokemon of some kind that might be a god <laughs> and will also, for some reason, let you put it in a little ball. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that tends to be Pokemon. Pokemon is, but- at at its heart, about having really cool little monster guys that love you very much and get into really cool fights. <laughs> okay. that's, so- that's Pokemon. So if we're not going to break down on narrative lines, where would you break it down instead? Instead of narrative lines? I mean, like, if you're not going to follow things like character archetypes like Gym Leader or Future Champion or Team Rocket Grunt or whatever, where would you break it down? Hmm. I I would break it down by Pokemon type. I would I would try to collect okay. the types into 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 bundles i guess into modes that you could then choose from as your playbooks like if if it wasn't going to go by narrative archetype or by like character type it would go by all right do you want to be the guy that has you know fairy normal and psychic or do you want to be the guy that has ghost poison and grass obviously ghost poison and grass (laughs) that's i think that's a pretty good spread I'm sure that <laughs> one of my Pokemon friends will listen to this and be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> That's the worst. I so haven't I memorized all their we weaknesses. Should, we should also maybe roll all of this back. All this nearly 30 minutes of actually pretty good discussion on like, what does, what is Pokemon even? Yeah. Uh, and like establish perhaps what we think is the most important thing. What is, what is, if we're going to capsule encapsulate pokemon into a role-playing experience what is the important most important part like what is this game about to me the most important part of pokemon is i think it's i think i already said it having a having really cool guys that are totally like my dudes like we are friends and we fight and travel together and they do okay. really cool elemental fights so what is the player character's relation to the to the dudes should that be left up to the player character? Like, well, 
mechanically oh but are mechanically. you are you like okay so are you the pokemon trainer from super smash brothers where the the human is in the background and cannot be interacted with and the things that are actually doing the fighting are the team of pokemon oh i i kind or of are you, i kind of like a or are you the or are you the main character of a pokemon game where you're running around on your bike fighting things in the tall grass beating up children for their money and like, <laughs> uh you know picking up any item you find on there i like a synthesis of the two i like there to be okay. like a really like permeable boundary between human pokemon trainer and the really cool pokemons <laughs> okay so like we didn't establish this beforehand so both of us are sort of arguing from two very different points of view yeah. because i, I would want i would want to create a pokemon game that is about the player character obviously like the adventure and the like being a dirty child on a bike or a dirty young adult whatever they don't have to be kids um and like exploring this like the exploration seems important to me uh having a team that has a relation to you is seems really important to me mm-hmm. like that was one of the things i really liked about the more modern games was that like you had the pokemon and me exactly where you could go pet yeah. them and then like and then so you could actually use like, t- transform like bonds or sex moves into s- pokemon relationship moves i'm really uncomfortable that we mentioned sex moves. i mean i said shouldn't call them sex moves but yeah. that is the the framework for which one character relates to another I- i'm worried though that pokemon can off like I'm, the I am actual little not bond. endorsing fucking pokemon <laughs> please do not do this thing um I, I'm worried that the monsters themselves themselves become like like the like the loot cycle in every other RPG where it's like oh I got this sword but ooh here's a better sword I throw this old sword away like that's that's kind of what they come down to like system like system wise in the game like okay right. I had this Pikachu but now I've got this uh, fucking Mareep that's got way better stats so I'm gonna ditch this Pikachu. Um, But you don't want to do that in a game that's narrative focused because that wasn't a sword you threw out. That was a living creature that you were developing a bond with. That's why I like the idea of there not being a really clear line between are you playing a trainer or are you playing the Pokemon? Because, and especially as far as the lore is concerned, those should be enmeshed. That's why I also defaulted to, okay, well, your playbooks are your character or your, uh, your trainer class because the Hex Maniac always has ghost types and it's always like the same like like three or four guys because those are her guys she's not playing it like the eight-year-old who's going to be a champion and is switching monsters out for stats because that's her ghastly she caught it when she was four and they're best friends you know what i mean right yeah so that's where we definitely agree and that's where you could totally have i have a ghastly and then it has this choice of ghost moves because it doesn't really matter in a tabletop game whether or not ghastly can learn exactly the same moves it learns in the game and we absolutely will not do that <laughs> no, we absolutely will not do that. i just don't have um, the patience or time right so the, like you can also condense a whole bunch of ghost moves into like the idea of ghost moves yeah because here's here's where if you listen to one of our previous episodes game feel is important you want the moves that this pokemon can learn to be i totally brain farted to feel like ghost moves Yes. Maybe with a couple iconic ones, but like it's maybe going to be a list of six. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so where the character gets their moves is from their Pokemon and the basic moves with maybe one or two alterations comes from your from your um, playbook. Yes. I like that. That's that's so, what I'm going with. I, I think we might long-term run into trouble. This is where I would be like, just write it and we'll test it. Uh, (laughs) Long-term trouble where um, if you do playbooks that are blocked off by uh, Pokemon type, then you run into the the biggest archetype that people are going to want to play, which is like the main character of a game or like an Ash character. How do you, how do you make that work in a way that is not just better than being locked into one Exactly. Type? You have to balance it in some way. That's why I was already thinking about like, okay, well, maybe the future champion, you know, they're, one of the benefits is they're not locked by type. But then the downside is your, your, Pokemon, your Pokemon out level you and they don't obey you anymore, which is, you know, that's something that happens in the game. It's something that happens in the show. Um, so you can have a basic move that's basically like, command pokemon which then you know 
on a on a success like the pokemon does what, what you tell it to it, it will take an action from one of its whatevers mm-hmm. uh on uh, a seven and nine like there's no collateral damage it it doesn't take liberties with your order yeah um, on a seven and nine it's pick one on a myth yeah it's on pick, pick one two pick but, two. but for the pokemon if, champion if you, maybe you always pick right. two and if you miss right. the 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 if you miss yeah. the GM, makes a hard move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Like you actually get a downgraded move because that's the balance. That's the balancing act of well, you're a future champion, so you can have whatever type you like. But there's, you know, here's the payment for that. Right. So, so I guess so. What you're saying is that the future champion runs the risk of harsher failures. Right. Or I, I mean, I'm I'm not married. Greater. I'm not married to that. I just agree that if we say the future champion can have a Pikachu and a Squirtle and a Charizard and a fucking Rowlet, then there should be something to balance that out because they're also traveling with the, you know, former gym member that can only have water types, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. But I mean, but also like, okay, so let's say you have a, a gym leader who is currently, let's talk about what the gym leader playbook might look like. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's, so gym leaders also are figures of authority right mm-hmm. so they probably have some kind of default move or like well you know everything is a move even if it's passive that like gets them plus one forward if they need to acquire resources or something like that so maybe there's right. a basic move for doing that yeah um and that like they are also almost certainly an adult <laughs> or or at least and can do things like if the if the if the other characters are young or are, are kids then they're a young adult like the gym leader must be the oldest in the right. group the gym leader must be the oldest in the group always uh whether that's like the 18 year old with a bunch of kids or like a a a, a 50 year old yeah. if everybody else you're a grown. grandmother <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah or you're a grandma like that's it sounds so much fun to me um but but one of the other things the gym leader has is basically an obligation to his or her gym yeah uh, so like your drop and also your Pokemon might have additional moves because they are strong. You're a gym leader. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so like where everyone else might have, they might get a team of three and they might pick, you know, three moves that they all, that all these, you know, have access to that must be under certain types. The gym leader might get a fourth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or can get twice the amount under, uh, you know, if it's the water gym, you get to pick eight water moves or whatever i'm spitballing numbers it probably wouldn't be that high but like they get extra yeah because they have strong pokemon yeah. um and like their relationship with the pokemon they might start at a higher track or whatever and maybe you know progress differently but but the gym leader's drawback is that they they are tied to a location they must return to their gym at some point. right they have to maintain their gym supremacy they have to maintain they have to maintain their gym supremacy and then like you might get a really interesting character arc where like people are coming to challenge the gym leader i was actually wondering about that if we shouldn't have like like one of the other downsides of being a gym leader is you draw attention not not just like good attention with like oh you're a gym leader and you have all the you know all the honors and benefits that come with that but also oh you're a gym leader seven ten-year-olds want to challenge you right now <laughs> they need a badge <laughs> right and like you could there could also be interesting drama there of like i don't have my badges we are a hundred miles from my gym i am trying to herd this idiotic 15 year old who thinks he's gonna go fight god well this 10 year old this 10 year old is the son of the town's mayor and they're not gonna let you in until you let him battle you because he's he needs this badge (laughs) you gotta figure this out right sorry Uh, i'm running the game now that's not and so we, we, we both sort of started running the game right then uh so but then you have like so we already discussed that a relationship with a pokemon is important yes. and your relationship to other characters is important. So like maybe what the breeder can do is be more fluid with the moves they have access to because they are breeding and changing their Pokemon loadout always. Maybe. Yeah. But then I'm, I'm worried. And they under- I'm worried they understand again about Pokemon. referring to that, to it as a loadout. Cause I'd, I want to come at it from the idea of like these, these aren't just, these aren't just moves. These aren't, these are creatures. And How I don't want to abstract move- it down to loot or gear move array or like things that your pokemon can do 
Yeah, you could be because you're a breeder. Um, because this is right. something this is something that exists in the game. If you know what you're doing, you can the breed Pokemon in such a way that they can learn moves that they wouldn't normally have access to, or they'd have higher yeah, stats. You or you know, if you're really good, you can figure out like your odds of getting a shiny Pokemon that way. Um, maybe the so, breeder is like you have fewer Pokemon, but one of your Pokemon is it, it knows a move it should not it shouldn't know or it shouldn't know. it's shiny, <laughs> which I don't know what that would yeah. be in this game, but that sounds cool. We gotta have that. Well, like- if it has a if 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 we're giving Pokemon like quality tags, shiny could be one of them. That it would be could be like the valuable tag in Apocalypse World. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which what does that mean? It means it has value. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a valuable. It's valuable. It's a valuable thing. It's yeah. rare. It's different. People are going to notice it. It might cause drama. There could be things that key off of it. Purely narrative. So like, effect. but also when you're when you're talking about like building a something like if we're talking about the under the hood look there is a point where you're going to be a little bit clinical about it Mm -hmm. so like the what the breeder does mechanically from a strictly kind of cold clinical standpoint is what it does mechanically is be able to to alter the way the pokemon alt interact with the game world mechanically so that's adjusting their moves it might be adjusting their stats it might be giving them things outside of type whatever so play play a breeder if you like doing that sort of thing anyway so does that sell you on that idea a little bit more um i i know what you're saying about like if we're talking about it system wise we have to get clinical and we have to look at it as a collection of stats but i also want to make sure that we don't take that so far that it bleeds into the narrative of of these these creatures are interchangeable for me do you yeah, know what i mean that's what you play test. that's what you that's play test for. that's true <laughs> 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 I, I understand your concern and I think we can make it work, but we are right now just sort of spitballing ideas. So we've, we've, we've got kind of a good uh, I think going with the, how to handle the relationship between the player character and their Pokemon and whether that even, whether there's even a difference. Um, but the next cool thing about Pokemon is actually making them fight. How do we handle right. fighting them? How do we handle Pokemon on Pokemon action? Right. So here is where we would have to start building our basic moves. Right. Okay. Uh, so, like, Pokemon attack is certainly going to be a basic move. Okay. Or command Pokemon, depending on how you want to frame it and build that game feel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pokemon fight, maybe maybe we do an initiative thing, maybe we don't. I pro- would probably almost rather not. Yeah, it's always, um, it's almost always just one-on-one. It's like a duel, right. basically. Um, yeah, so, like... You pick which Pokemon you're calling out first. And if we're going with like, you have a team and then you have a collection of moves you use in battle uh, from the kind of Pokemon you are allowed to have. Uh, obviously, uh, with like maybe a like, you know, you, you use them appropriately. So if you're playing the kid, you know, the f- future champion and you're like, I choose Pikachu, then you, you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to use, um, you know, water gun. With yeah, Pikachu. yeah, but you know that's that's just narrative. It, narrative e- even though Water Gun may be in the list of moves your Pokemon can use, right? Um, but then when when we talk about like the Pokemon fight, um, mm-hmm. it's it's understood that it's like okay, it, it's an RPG. They all have stats, and those affect the speed of their attack and the strength of their attack, and also how many hit points they have so how many attacks they can take before they're they're taken out um how do we want to handle that kind of a system do we want to actually give them like a numerical hp do we want to go with like a damage clock from like vanilla vanilla apocalypse world how, or do we want to do with like the boxes or how how do you think that would be how do you think that should be handled oh man the clock is always kind of weird to me yeah yeah um and also in pokemon it's never why... it's never a death it's always a, f- a faint. no it's always a faint yeah and and the consequence guess... the consequence of death is just this pokemon can't be used until it is revived at a certain point. right so how long do you want a fight to go on mm-hmm. and how important is it to you to reflect that like a Pikachu is maybe squishier than an Onyx? Right. Um, hmm. It seems important, so, like, but on, honestly, when, when it comes to abstracting Pokemon fights down, the coolest parts mm-hmm. are the like elemental rock, paper, scissors. 
like knowing, right. okay, water beats fire, fire beats grass, grass beats fucking water. <laughs> water. <laughs> Except, you know, times a million, there's like whole charts and shit. Fairy beats dragon, psychic beats fucking what does psychic even beat fighting <laughs> fighting yeah. yeah okay the the elemental rock paper scissors um seems to be like the coolest most fun part of the game but we are already sort of getting weird with it if we go with the idea that playbooks are type limited um right so if you use like a tag system for your pokemon yes you can say Pikachu is, you know, uh, small, um, electric, and maybe that's it. Right? Yeah, it could be you get a maybe you could type another tags. tag maybe for uh, first evolution. Maybe depending if we want to get if we want to get that granular. I don't. I don't, I don't think it. that would have as much of an effect. Right. So I, I, so I, I like Pikachu, the the tag system because P- sorry. Right, because Pikachu is small. Small Pokemon only have three hits. Okay. Uh, because I'm, I'm I'm literally just making this up as I'm going along right now, and because Pikachu is electric, that means he's you know he's electric weak to he's weak to ground and he's good ground, against flying. ground right good against flying right. Uh, so you already know those two. So if you're if you're engaged in a Pokemon battle and you're using Pikachu, and someone calls out like Jigglypuff, well, you don't really have any particular advantages, and Jigglypuff is also small, so maybe it also has three hits. You know, small, normal. Fairy? Yeah, it's fairy Dad now. fairy later? Okay. Right, right. so then you get, you get appropriate tags or whatever, and those determine things. So then, like, uh, Pikachu uses Thundershock, which, as we previously talked about, like, Pokemon, there being a pool of moves for your Pokemon team, mm-hmm. you have Thundershock in there, Pikachu can use it. Pikachu uses Thundershock, uh, maybe do, like, a, a hack and slash kind of thing, okay. where, like, you know... On a ten plus, you do a hit. On a seven to nine, pick two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On on a thing, you miss. Um, with uh, it's super effective, and it's not very effective being added to it, depending on type advantage. Okay. How does that come in then? How do we? Uh, if it's that? super effective when you hit, when when you when you deal like when you would hit enough to to do a hit, you do another one. Oh, okay. So you do two hits for super effective. Right. But then for not right. very so effective, what half a hit? How does it work? Um, one less to a to a minimum of zero. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, so like uh maybe a medium sized Pokemon, which would be like I don't know, war turtle. <laughs> I don't know if size, because size, oh, if we're going to st- start talking about size in Pokemon, it gets fucking weird. <laughs> it gets fucking weird. So, like, well, let's, let's, maybe you just, maybe you just do small if it's something particularly little, like, I, Poke, I like a Pikachu. I think that And should, large if it's something particularly big. Yeah, if it's, if it's, to like, a defining that, feature of that Pokemon, like, right. Joltik would be small, because it's the smallest fucking thing in the world. Or Pikachu right. could be fast, because it has a really high speed. Pikachu is quick. And that's its tag, right? Or you know, Onyx maybe is a... tough, or right, you know, yeah, whatever would be the defining feature of that Pokemon, right? And then you could you could use that like maybe all Pokemon have four hits unless they are tiny, and then they have one less, uh, or if they're large, and then they have one more, or rather tough. Maybe we should right. attach that to tough, right? But then for small, it could be, oh, it's got fewer, it can take fewer hits, but it is harder itself to hit because it's so small to try to balance it out. Right. Though that does make it weird because you don't want to mess with the seven to nine, six minus 10 plus. But you could say small is just a flat minus one. Yeah. When, when targeting it with attacks. Yeah. They take, yeah, take a negative one forward to attack it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then you could have other moves like Leer uh, would give minus one forward. Yeah. When you apply them rather than straight up attacks. Yeah. And then you could do things like Harden, which then, uh, you know, reduces hits again by one to a minimum of zero. I'm worried that we might be getting too too granular, though, if we're going to start picking out moves and then attaching system to it. You know what I mean? As opposed to just leaving it narrative. Yeah, but we're already doing a pbta hack yeah and i what we've discussed is not any more complex than dungeon world yeah okay 
like PBTA is still kind of a traditional RPG. So how how do you see as much as I've just offended everyone on the f- former members of the Forge by saying that? Yeah, don't yeah, careful. Um <laughs> <laughs> So how do you how should the duel play out? Let's let's say it's just a straight up like my character has three Pokemon, this NPC has three Pokemon. How how does the back and forth go? Right. At so what I would point say does that it the PC, end? Right, the PC goes first. Un- unless there's a, the the NPC has the NPC Pokemon has a special move, or they're tagged or you quick, can, or something like that, or they're tagged quick or whatever. Like, and if there's there's two quick ones, um, flip a coin or whatever. Uh, uh, in player character versus NPC player character, always goes first unless special effect. Okay, um, which could also be like the result of a GM hard move, like because you could mess up and then fall into a scene that results in a Pokemon battle where you are going second because you failed. You stepped on an Ekans. <laughs> <laughs> and and right. it gets to go first. Right. Um, also the possibility of like, you know, there's Pokemon on the tall grass. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then you just open with your Pokemon uses moves. Okay. Sort of what I did for the Sailor Moon thing. Like you have attacks. You have your magical attacks. That was almost too many steps. Like I, th- I think I would streamline it more. So like Thundershock is its particular thing. It, it, it does x amount of hits on a 10 plus it on a seven to nine it does these things on a six it does this Mm -hmm. and then all moves sort of follow the same structure or you can or you could write pokemon attack is this seven to nine does a hit or 10 plus does a hit seven to nine does a hit but uh not a six minus you miss what what i'm concerned with Uh, is where where before i was like speaking like from a playbook standpoint that the player and the pokemon mm -hmm. are are permeable there's no difference during a fight, mm-hmm. there is a difference because you're a dude right. with three different monsters and only one can be engaged in a duel at a time. So mm-hmm. how do how do we handle that? How do we handle okay, Pikachu, I choose you. Oh fuck, Pikachu, I shouldn't have chose you. <laughs> like, how do you handle okay, never mind. Squirtle, get out there. You can never fail to swap your Pokemon. Okay. Like there's never instance in any of the game where you could fail to swap your Pokemon, right? Even when they're confused, there you are, still can't. There are sometimes penalties or consequences. But I don't right. think you can fail to bring out a Pokemon. There, I right. know there so might I, be a status that. Hang on. Well, we'll we'll assume for now that so no, you can't is it fail. Important to the way the game plays that you should be able to fail calling back your Pokemon. Uh, I would say no, no. Okay, so you can always recall your Pokemon if you realize that they have a type disadvantage, or you've caught become unawares, or you're being hit by a GM move. Right? Yeah. But you can that always takes up stow a Pokemon. No penalty. No problem. That takes up your action. Okay. So calling back Pikachu, throwing out Squirtle, that's what you're doing this turn. Cool. So Squirtle is going to get hit by whatever the, the enemy's next move is. Right. Ah, set mode. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it has to kind of be set move. It's a tabletop RPG. Yes. So that's... Because if you can just switch with no consequences, then there's no, then there's no reason not to just continuously switch to get the best that result. That solves that. And then we can have just a small part at the end of the playbook that lists your three or four guys with little boxes to denote, okay, this is how many hits they've already taken. And maybe like a blank line for a status effect if we want to include status effects. Just to keep track of like, if we're going to be switching our guys in and out. You want to know, okay, Pikachu already took a hit and it's confused. Now Squirtle is out. Um, yeah, I mean, status effects are pretty easy to do. Yeah, just a tag. Mostly. Just a tag, yeah. Yeah, and probably try to keep them short and simple. I know that, like, the later games have added a ton more, but we could probably stick with Paralyzed, Confused. Asleep. I forgot. Asleep, right. How can I forget <laughs> about Asleep? You Poison. know, we should also, yeah. like, if, we're, if we were going to do this more seriously, we should really look at the card game, too. Ah yes, that's a good idea because which I which I haven't played since I was a kid either. <laughs> yeah, it it also simplifies things pretty nicely. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we want to put a pin in this and maybe do Pokemon by the Apocalypse Part Two? Should our we Patreon get high enough? Yeah, how about we we end it here? We'll just release a long. It's not like we have to worry about server space anymore. This will just be a long episode. So if you guys like the homebrew jam like if you were really jiving on listening to the two of us talk out design like this contribute to our patreon this is our patreon preview episode um i guess technically this would be a bonus bonus experience experience but i like the subclass of having 
having uh, hungry jams and kind of yeah, where we like, just feeling like, the shit out. Yeah, uh, and they'll probably be closer to an hour long. Yeah, um, we, we'll we'll put it under the umbrella of bonus content. Um, we're probably more likely to do this kind of bonus content once we hit the seventy five dollars a month mark and we release two episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, then that will probably lean more towards the first one is a fun shoot the shit 15 minutes. It's us talking off topic or doing a mini episode about something tangentially gaming related. Uh, and then the second one will be a jam like this. Yeah. How's that sound? Yeah. That sound good to you guys. If that sounds good to you, um, subscribe to our Patreon and then we'll probably put up polls and stuff about what to talk about. Um, but Hey, if you want to give us a topic to jam on, you can email us at bonus Yeah. Just Stop throw out a, throw out a setting or a theme and a system and, and we'll be yeah. like, yeah, let's fucking do it. I totally just said our email was bonus Oh, Monica. Bonus at gmail.com. Bonus at gmail.com. Yep, or you can send us a DM on Twitter at bonus exp cast. Yup, and I think that's it. Yeah, our Patreon goes live March fifth. If you like this, subscribe. Yeah, do it. Yeah, go do it. Get out of here, everybody. Get out. All right, fine. And change it if you want to. See you later. Thanks for listening. Bonus Experience is written and produced by Monica and Ray. Our cover art and logo are by Nino Studios, and our opening theme is Reuse Noise with the Light by CDK, which is used under the Attribution Non-Commercial Creative Commons license. This podcast guarantees plus one enhancement to running games, which applies before you roll. See you next time.